So you have a weedy overgrown field and you want to convert it into a garden and you're not sure what to do with it. Hey, I'm Justin Hit with Prosperity Homestead. Sometimes we get the land we can afford. It's not necessarily the land that we want, but the secret of Prosperity Homestead and what we teach here is that you can transform any land, even degraded land, into a high value property that has abundance. Now, what is abundance? It is fruits, vegetables, meats, uh, all the things your family needs, recreational activities, a lot of joy and excitement. And one of the things you could do with weedy, overgrown land, maybe it's a fallow field, maybe it's the back lot, maybe it's something that's been neglected for years, is you can do this exercise and discover abundance in your property today. So first off, weeds are your friend. Weeds are beautiful indicators of soil conditions. They help you understand and read the state of the land. So if you're looking at a field and it tends to have certain weeds in it, it tells you something. A field full of dandelions tells you there's a state of soil compaction. Thistles tell you that the area has faced fire before or previous harsh conditions in the soil and that the soil is actually damaged. Thistles actually are very spiky and they keep things away. And now I know this is a little anam anamorphic where we're I'm attributing physical characteristics to biological processes, but it's as if the soil experienced trauma such as fire and it activated the thistle seed to protect that soil. And the thistle is spiky and it's it's hard to get close. By the way, it's full of minerals and nutrients, but it is uh, it is protecting that soil so that the soil has time to recover. A ginkgo cola, for example, grows in wet soil full of humus, but actually in some climates it grows in sand. So so not only what is growing in that land tells you something, but as a proxy for your climate, it tells you other things that are useful. And by the way, all of these weeds are edible. You can eat dandelions, you can eat thistle, you can eat uh, intercola. Uh, it, it's all a powerful source. Now, again, there's there may not be a market for these things, so you can go pick your weeds and eat your weeds and, and really enjoy the nutrients that are available as your land is transitioning into something more valuable. But there's probably not a market value for a lot of these things. Now, here's what's important you're not likely to find the same weeds in every square foot of your land. So the exercise that I'm describing here is going out in your land and actually developing a weed map of your property. This gives you the opportunity to start seeing what kind of soils you have. Is the back of the field too wet? And that's why we find a lot of the ginkgo cola growing. It has a meshy root that holds the soil together. Do we find up near the house, there's an area that has a lot of thistle, but outside that area, there's no thistle at all. Maybe that's an indicator there used to be a burn pile. And you might want to be more careful going through that soil because previous owners could have been burning trash there. And you don't want the burnt plastics and other chemicals in the soil. Maybe near the the edges of a field, you find a, lots of dandelions, and that tells you that it's compacted soil. That might be an indicator that there's a road there, and you may want to use that for, for access point against the fence line than to use it for field because uh, a good compacted road is very expensive, and if one already exists, why not use it? Do you see how this works? So we're going to draw this on paper, we're going to draw this map of our weeds, and we're going to start going to identification guides and identify every plant, its growing condition, and the usefulness of that plant. It is very possible that you have on your land very useful and healthy plants that you can cultivate. Now, right now, they might be in a weedy mess. It might be overgrown. It may not be desirable to, to harvest, but knowing those plants exist can save you a lot of time and headache. Now, what is this the contrary to? Well, a lot of modern farming and agriculture will basically just spray chemicals and kill everything. But we don't want to kill what's there and not have the signal that the plant is giving us. See, the, the weed is growing there because that's the ideal growing condition for that weed. If we simply burn the field and then start over, the seed bank is still in that soil. If we apply a herbicide, then we've killed the plant 
but the seed bank is still in the soil and we have not improved the soil conditions necessary to move on to the next activity. So maybe we're going to establish a pasture or uh, a pasture or we're going to uh, do a garden area. So what we're doing here by identifying the weeds and, and uh, mapping out those growing conditions is we're getting a really good picture of the land itself and then we can start looking at the goals what do we want to do with this land now if you've got land that you want to convert to to a garden space for example you're going to want to find the areas where you have good nutrients in the soil already because we don't want to be bringing in a lot of outside resources we don't want to be uh, fertilizing and and having to haul a lot of materials unless it's absolutely necessary so you can take a weedy area map it out and identify a section of that weedy area that is ready to garden today and so you can start converting those weeds into higher calorie crops higher quality crops now again quality depends on what your goals are now how do we convert these weeds well you can feed or flail now, before the weeds go to seed, or they're in a season to go to seed, you want to flail the crop, the, the, the weedy area, to kind of remove all the brambles and, and knock down all the thorny plants, because not every weed is useful. Um, but doing that will return that biomass to the soil. Now, by doing it before the plant goes to seed, you reduce the seed uh, availability in the soil. Now, again, if you have goats, you can use the goats to convert the weed into feed and the weed into a quality meat. So this low value biomass can be converted by ruminant animals into pelletized fertilizer. And it is a really good way of, of eliminating the weeds without a lot of work. Now, you, again, you could go in there with a with a scythe and you can go in there with a flail mower. You can go in there and put a lot of work into it. But anytime you can convert something with animals, such as goats or chickens, you can uh, get a value added product out of it. Now, again, goats love going in with the weeds and they're going to be picky. So you may want to um, to mob graze them a little bit uh, because they, they may not eat some plants where they'll prefer other plants but if they're in there long enough they'll eat everything my point being is that you convert idle space unused space disused space not by simply destroying it but by understanding what are we looking at are these weeds telling us something about the soil conditions how can that inform us so that we can apply the appropriate uh, removal methods in order to go to that next level now, some people will go in and just simply till a field and they'll till under all those seeds or they'll uh, expose new seeds. And that actually makes it worse. Um, what tends to work best is to uh, adjust the soil pH to remove a lot of weeds. So, for example, uh, blackberries, uh, you may get blackberries sometimes. Sometimes you just get a bunch of thorny canes. Those tend to grow in, in wet, acidic soil. Now, the soil drains well, but it tends to be wet and there's an acidic buildup, which the, these plants love. And so if you simply just till that in, it's going to keep coming back. Um, but if you apply lime, make the pH level more neutral, the blackberry seeds stop uh, germinating. And so if you are then been flail mowing it or, or in, introducing animals uh, to break down the plants, and then there's no more seeds being introduced to the plants, then the plants will not come back even if the soil conditions are the same. Of course, though, we want to improve the soil conditions because a neutral soil tends to grow more of our vegetables. That's what a lot of folks, when they write in, they want to either be raising quality meat, which you can raise them in a weedy, idle field, um, or raising the vegetables. Now, the conversion to grass increases value because grass grows very quickly and grass can have higher protein levels and nutrient levels than just a random field full of brambles. It's a more controllable environment. And so while you can raise animals on a weedy field, they'll start selecting what they enjoy eating and ignoring what they don't. And you're not going to have a productive end result. At least if animals are in a grassy area or a field that's transitioning to grass, if they become selective, you can always cut the grass and use it as bedding. Uh, so you can feed it to them in the winter. Grass has a longer shelf life. Uh, bundling up weeds, the weeds aren't necessarily going to stay 
overwinter and make a good feed or fodder for your animals. So there's a lot of Jeff Lawton has a lot of examples of using chicken tractors to remove seeds in the soil or to uh, knock down the a weedy environment. Uh, there's examples of goats knocking down weedy environments. The key to understand here is that we don't want to skip the observation, the inventory, and the mapping of soil conditions when it comes to addressing a area that is overgrown or weedy. This is very important because once you start mapping things out, you may discover some areas are better to put into garden now and other areas might be better to put into tree systems. Uh, and, and this is something you'll discover as you start mapping things out. What I don't want you to do is be reactive. When you see something that's overgrown with weeds and you don't take the time to know what these weeds are, you could be destroying valuable habitat. So some weeds actually are great for butterf migratory birds and butterflies. Um, some weeds will ha harbor uh, beneficial insects and other weeds will actually attract uh, negative insects. So, so aphids, for example, um, some weeds will at attract aphids. And if you cut those weeds and then take the weed away, uh, the aphids will go with it and you could then destroy it with fire and you killed a bunch of aphids. So the habitat of a weedy area without proper observation could be destroying a habitat that protects the beneficial crops that you have. So if you have two acres, for example, and you're going to convert the two acres to a garden, you do it in sections at a time according to what the soil biology is telling you. So you may have an area of the field that's growing a lot of clover, hairy vetch, uh, a lot of things that look like cover crops. That's where you start your garden. The area that has thistles and nightshade and other things like that, that's where you impound your, your goats. Um, an area that has uh, a lot of seedy, uh, you know, a lot of weeds that are full of seed, that's where you, you flail it down and then you run chickens through. And then eventually you're going to get into a, a crop rotation that allows you to, as the soil improves, expand your garden space, expand the animals and such. I would like you to look at this as you're dancing with the land. You are engaging the land where it already is and moving it towards a, a better condition and space for its intended use. You're not forcing it by spraying it with chemicals or blazing it with fire uh, or tilling it under. You're not using an aggressive force, but instead observation, engagement, education, and uh, really a discovery. There are times where you're going to go through a field and you're going to see what looks like weeds. But once you do the inventory and once you map it out, you realize that it's very beneficial plants. It's plants that could be chopped for fodder. It's plants that could be chopped as a mulch, so a green mulch or a green fertilizer. Um, sometimes it's simply you didn't understand what you're looking at and the cycle of the plant is just off. So, for example, a wildflower field looks beautiful uh, in the spring, but as you move towards the fall and winter, it actually gets uh, very ugly, it, you know, gets brown and it, now you need to apply the flail mowing to it. Uh, and so it'll be ready for the next season or rather than simply uh, being upset. And now the soil, the soil bank of wildflower seed could provide you habit, uh, feed and habitat for uh, beneficial insects, uh, bees, honey, especially honeybees, uh, which you may not even know those flowers are there without letting it go fallow and, and monitoring for a season. Now, once you've discovered certain uh, low value weeds, such as thistles, um, thistles, not low value. You can do things with it, but thistles, nightshades and things like that uh, have spikes. And I constantly get the spike in my glove and then I'll stick my finger again. And that's why I consider it low value. Uh, but those areas you may want to uh, allow them to grow a little bit, flail mow it before it goes to seed adjust the pH levels of the soil, introduce grass seed or, or cover crop seeds to start uh, pushing those types of plants away by improving soil quality. So I know I've covered a lot here today and just like any of the other podcasts or audio programs or training tutorials, uh, you can ask your questions at www.prosperityhomestead.com 
www.thepowerofpowerpodcast.org. We have a membership program. We have a newsletter. And my intention is to help you better understand the natural world so that you can take any piece of land, degraded land, quality land, and just take it to the next level. You could transform a weedy, degraded field that's been ignored and overgrown for years, and you can transform it into a wildflower meadow. You could transform it into a community garden. You could transform it into the homestead of your dreams. These things are possible, and I'm Justin Hitt with Prosperity Homestead, hoping to deliver that to you uh, today. Thanks for listening. Be sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next episode.